Chess friends, welcome to the Knight of Sicilian, one of the sharpest openings in all of chess, how do we reach the Knight ORF, after e4, white grab space in the center, it opens up lines for development, instead of playing the symmetrical e5, black immediately imbalances the position with c5, this move which controls the central square d4, is known as the Sicilian defense, when grandmasters want to play for a win, many choose a sharp Sicilian defense, white continues with knight f3, developing a piece and preparing the central pawn thrust, d4, black responds with d6, controlling the e5 square, in opening up the light squared bishop, white's most direct and popular choice is d4, this is known as the open Sicilian, as white opens up the center and aims to develop the pieces, rapidly black does not want, white to enjoy two pawns in the center, so, black captures the pawn with c takes d4, white recaptures the pawn and centralizes the knight, with knight takes d4, black develops a piece and attacks white's unprotected e4 pawn, with knight f6, white defends the pawn and develops another piece with knight c3, reach the knight off Sicilian, once black plays a6 it's hard to believe that this little pawn move on the edge of the board, is known as one of the sharpest and most complex opening lines in chess, with several world champions and other creative attacking grandmasters, relying on this weapon against e4, so what's the idea, the knight orf, is a sharp counter-attacking system in black's d6, and a6 pawns prepare b5, and e5, the a6 pawn also discourages white's pieces from using the b5 square, which will be important on the next move, a popular line for white is bishop e3, developing a piece supporting the center and as we'll see it soon prepares queenside castling, one of the drawbacks to the knight orf is that black falls behind in development, so white may gain a dangerous attack early in the game. The knight orf welcomes such a fight in black strikes in the center immediately with e5, Black's aggressive pawn move has created a backward d6 pawn, which can only be protected by pieces we can see why a6 is important, as white's knight cannot use the square to attack black's d6 pawn, if white tries to play knight f5, black has the instructive counterstrike d5, white's pawn on e4 can't both capture the pawn on d5, and protect the knight on f5. At the same time so white cannot expect to demolish the knight orf with such a plan after e5, White's most popular response is knight f3, moving the knight to safety and also adding another piece in front of white's queenside pawns, which will help defend the king after white castles on that side of the board, after playing e5 black has created a hole on d5, so a natural developing move is bishop e6, centralizing the bishop and controlling the important d5, and c4 squares. White signals that black isn't the only one looking for an aggressive attacking game, in place f3. Supporting the center and as we'll see the move prepares to launch a kingside attack with g4, black continues to develop and prepares the option to castle with bishop e7, white now creates a queen bishop battery and prepares to castle queenside, with queen d2. Both kings now seek shelter at least for the time being with castles kingside, and castles queenside, white castles on the opposite side of the board, is black preparing to launch a kingside attack. Castling has also created a queen rook battery on the d-file, increasing the pressure against black's backward d6 pawn, black continues with knight b, to d7, black's knight enters the game and will often use the b6 square, to launch an attack from the c4 square, connecting with black's bishop on e6, the calm before the storm is complete and now we can see the attacking potential for both sides after g4, white's setup known as the English attack, unleashes a pawn storm on the king's side preparing to attack black's knight on f6, and eventually opening up lines against the enemy king, black is not going to sit around and wait for this attack, to arrive and uses the strength behind the early a6 move to play b5, black counterattacks white's queen side with similar ideas to open lines, against the enemy king, white's attack continues with g5, white's attack creates the first threat but black refuses to react and continues to counterattack with b4, if white captures the knight. Notice b takes c3 regains the material and threatens to capture white's queen with check, so white's attacking chances are less promising, instead white retreats the knight with knight e2, black also moves a knight to safety with knight e8, both knights plan to reposition and join the attack against the enemy king, after both sides spent one move on defense the mutual attacks continue with f4, 
attacking black center and threatening f5. It's no surprise that black does not defend against this threat and continues to counterattack with a5, white's pawn storm continues with f5, attacking black's bishop and joining the g5 pawn, with an eventual plan of attacking black's pawns in front of the enemy king, black is just in time to counterattack, once again with a4, in the sharpest lines of the knight orf. Such as the English attack peace sacrifices are common with both sides doing everything they can to open up lines for their major pieces to start attacking, the enemy king white and black will both have reasonable chances, to succeed in this razor sharp opening, beneath the surface which is filled with exciting attacks and tactical fireworks, there is a fundamental pawn structure that helps us understand the key ideas, in the knight or Sicilian on move 3, black play c takes d4 which opens up the d-file for white's queen, and rooks to enjoy black accepted this pawn exchange, as it opened up the c-file for black's rooks and queen, to use to build an attack, especially if white's king castles queen side. Black's key central strike is e5, which creates a backward d6 pawn, since black has already moved the e and c pawns the backward, d6 pawn can only be protected by pieces, which means this will always be a target for white moving the pawn to e5, also means the d5 square is weak, as black cannot control that square with a pawn, this means d5 is a great square for white's pieces, especially a knight outpost so this is a strategic theme to keep in mind. It's no surprise then that if allowed black will look for a d5 break, fighting for counterplay and removing its potentially weak backward d6 pawn, the signature knight off move is a6 on move 5, and we know this prepares the important space grabbing counter strike b5, as important as this move often is for black to generate counterplay, notice it also creates a backward a6 pawn in the knight orf, black often accepts two backward pawns a6 and d6, which can be serious positional weaknesses. If white is able to simplify the position into a favorable end game, of course black's active play compensates for these weaknesses, but it's important not to forget the structural concessions black made to enjoy the attacking chances, in the knight orf, we know black is ready to strike in the center with e5, but is this always a good idea in most cases, this is a healthy active idea, but there are some exceptions a once favorite move of world champion Bobby Fischer was bishop c4. If black automatically plays e5, this is a very committal decision as white can now play knight f5, not only does white's bishop add pressure to the vulnerable f7 square, it also controls the d5 square, so black does not have the thematic counterattack d5, white's pieces are well positioned to dominate the central light squares after bishop c4, a more flexible choice for black is to play e6, restricting white's light squared bishop, when black can remain flexible considering ideas such as b5 and e5 if allowed in the future, since black is behind in development with these early pawn moves, white can also play the ambitious bishop g5, once again black should not rush to play e5, white can now take advantage of the hole created on d5, by first eliminating its key defender with bishop takes f6, black does not want to accept more pawn weaknesses with g takes f6, so after queen takes f6, knight d5, threatening the queen, as well as knight c7 check, black defends with queen d8. And now white can play knight f5, white's knights dominate the light squares a key theme, black wants to avoid in the knight orf after bishop g5, black should protect the light squares with e6, white can continue to play energetically with f4, grabbing space and preparing dangerous ideas including e5, and f5 staying true to the spirit of the opening, black in counter attack with queen b6, White can defend the threatened b2 pawn with knight b3, but can also offer a pawn sacrifice with queen d2. White offers black the chance to enter the so-called poison pawn variation, after queen takes b2, black is happy to win a pawn and compromise white's queen side structure, creating two isolated pawns on the other hand, white is happy to sacrifice a pawn, gaining a huge lead in development with positive attacking chances, thanks for watching my video, wish you all the best. Bye bye see ya.